Hi guys, so today we're looking at the Lock Grip Primer from Makeup Revolution. Um, I've kind of done one side with this and one side with the NYX Ultimate Primer, just to kind of like compare the two. The next one is a little bit more expensive, it's £8 for 8ml and this one's 5 pounds for 8ml. And yes, the packaging's like completely different sizes, but anyway. So what Revolution say about this on their website is, Lock your eye makeup in with Revolution Lock It Grip Eyeshadow Primer. With a nourishing clear gel formula containing hyaluronic, I'm assuming that might be hyaluronic acid, but they have just said hyaluronic, cherry blossom and vitamin B, this not only intensifies shadow pigment and guarantees all night wear, but also stops makeup setting into fine lines around the eyes. It's vegan and it's cruelty free. So we've got a bit of an application section. I will warn you that I went and got my lips done not even two days ago. So there's a bit of bruising where we move into the application section. Um, and I've not got my foundation on yet, so be prepared. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at how the application went. Right, so let's get started. So this guy comes in a box. Don't know why I'm saying that, it's important. And, ooh. I don't know if it's just the lid, but this looks very confusing. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's alright, it's just a wee dough fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Revolution one on the right hand side of my face my right hand eyelid and the next one that I normally go with on the left side so yeah they've got the same kind of applicator it's just because the lid was see-through that this one looked confusing for a minute so let's zoom in zoom 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 so, so this one's clear so that's not my preference I like a little bit of pigment and you know, in a, um, in a primer, sorry, because I have a little bit of veins in my eye, you know, across my eyelid. Um, you can see that kind of purple one there. Um, usually having a, a bit of tint to my primer would cancel that out. So I'll show you on this side when I'm doing the other one. This feels really, really, really silicony. Like, you know the crazy silicon face primers? It feels like a really, I was about to say a watery version of that, but you know, like a really thin textured version of that. Um, and yeah, first, second ingredient, silica. Um, I mean, silicon primers are good, but it's not a sensation I'm used to having on my eye, particularly that level of like silicon. So then we've got the next ultimate um, eyeshadow base. So look at that. You know, my big, um, my big vein. <clears throat> Waving my finger on my pajamas like a professional. Flynn, my dog, as usual, is floating about. So, if you hear any strange noises, that will be him. So it's not that it covers those veins entirely, but it definitely like softens up the appearance of them. So, because that one's like a way darker vein to begin with, and it looks lighter than that one. But anyway, so, if you've been around my channel for a while, you know what's coming next. We're going in with a Kiko Smart Shadow Shade 10. Um, for me, this is just a pale skin tone colour that I like to use under my brow bone. Um, it's at the stage where there's like a few crumbs left, and I'm just kind of grinding them down, because it's easier than trying to get a brush into it. So basically I have to turn this into a loose shadow now rather than using it like a pressed shadow. Um, so yes, I could have done that off camera, but I forgot. So with this one in particular, we're probably going to notice that I need more on the Revolution side because it's not got that pigment base to help it out already. Um, so it feels like the Revolution one is kind of grabbing the product less than this next one. Um, so like, weirdly with the amount of silicon on it, I think because it's so thin, it's still got quite a bit of slip to it. Um, so, might have an easier time blending shadows onto that. Have you found some packaging to play with? Have you? Um, but if you're wanting your primer to really enhance your colour, 
um, you know, it's possibly not going to help you out as much with that. So, then, I'm glad this is an affordable eyeshadow <laughs> that I'm using so much of. Okay. Roughly. Roughly even. Um, I've had a bit of a go-to eye look since I dyed my hair, so um, I've been playing with the Huda Beauty Ruby Obsessions palette. Basically this colour, this colour and this colour. So let's throw them on. So I'm just using this weird crease brush from Relove by Revolution as well. And I like this for doing my kind of transition-y shades because it's just really wide, it's shaped and it's got a decent amount of fluff to it. So you can kind of blend and apply as you go but because it's got that flat it's quite easy to get a shape um, compared to a round brush because I can just like stamp to get the sort of wing shape and then just go. Again, I feel like we're looking less pigmented on this side, which is weird, especially because we're now working on top of another eyeshadow. How can it be doing that? Weird. Yeah, it still just looks... I mean, I don't really need these to look that even because it is just a sort of transition shade. But yeah, it's weird. Okay, hopefully it'll all look good in the end. So I'm going to go into the, the darkest red in this palette. This is where we're going to start blending onto the lid, which is clean of other shadows, so get a better idea of what this actual base does when it comes to blending. Let's just quickly do the same thing on the other side just so that it, we'll do it step by step so we can compare. So, okay. It's hard to see on camera but this is looking a fraction lighter in real life um, on the Revolution side. But I guess if you're more into like natural eye looks, that's not going to be a problem for you. I like my pigment. And Flynn likes cardboard boxes. Right, excuse me, Mister. I'm sorry. You can. Ha I promise you can have it later. Oh no, it's a game because I've tucked at it. Flynn, let go. Not yours. Let go. Let go. Go find one of your millions of toys, okay? Right, so, sorry, back to this. Um, yeah, he's like a toddler. He likes cardboard boxes. Christmas Day is going to be interesting again. Um, I'll just get him a cardboard box for Christmas. Be nice and affordable. So, I'm just going to quickly blend out these edges. And yeah, I've ended up pretty much covering most of my transition shade, but that's fine. So again, this is looking way more pigmented. Grr. Ah oh well, I want enough eyeshadow. It's not really, you know, can afford to use up more than I need to. Right, okay. Oof, I've went way crazy. Different shapes now. Mm 
Okay, cool. Now, sometimes I go in with a bit of black to deepen things up. Um, I think today is going to be one of those days because I think it's going to help me with balancing this out a little bit. So I'm just going to grab the one from Lethal Cosmetics because that wee palette is still sitting here. Yes, that means I haven't tied it away yet. I'm going to stamp that into the crease yeah. and I'm going to stamp slightly less into the crease on the side that's already pretty deep. Hopefully this is going to balance us out. Hopefully. Please. Close enough. If anything I think we've now made this the darker side. So I'm glad we're nearly finished because Flynn is wanting attention. Um, so last but not least, I quickly, actually not even last, I added an extra step yesterday and I loved it and we're doing it again. Um, I just go in with my finger for this shade. And it's like a pinky ruby sparkly situation. And um, let's see. So yeah, it looks more pinky on this eye. That's weird. So I'm just not getting the same depth of colour with that clear revolution one. I mean, obviously if I had the same primer on each eye, it wouldn't be noticeable. Um, but because I've now done the comparison and I know, I feel like if I use that one, am I going to be wasting products trying to build up colour? I don't know. Maybe natural office days. I'll end up using that one. And then the extra step was this is a really old Urban Decay Moon Dust palette. There's one called Element. And then I'll be done in just two seconds and it'll come and play with you. Um, so yeah, I've just been tapping some of that right on top. And it's just got some larger kind of coppery sparkles add a bit more dimension into this and this turned into more of a tutorial about the eyes but anyway so time wise it is quarter to ten so we'll see if we get any difference in wear and um, we've obviously already seen a bit of a difference just in kind of application and pigmentation between the two um, but yeah we'll do a wear test and we'll see right we're back for a wee check-in because I've noticed a difference so it is just before one o'clock. So this is my this is my next eye and this is my revolution eye. That sounds weird anyway. So we've got a little bit of a crease going on. So obviously my skin folds in the same place on each eye. Um but when I stretch out you can still kind of see the creases left behind on this one compared to this guy. So getting a bit worried how this is gonna keep going throughout the day. Because admittedly the description online was about this helping with the pigment of your eyeshadow, which was... I mean, maybe it does help with it, but it doesn't help as much as the next one. Um, but now it looks like it's not going to help with the wear as much either. So, anyway, I will go about the rest of my day. I'm going to go buy more, more Christmas decorations, I hope. And I will come back when there's anything else to chat about. Right, so we're back and my lipstick's wearing off a little bit so you can see my bruising again, yay! So, it is 10 to 10, uh, well, just after quarter to 10, six and a half. So, right, so I'm back, my lipstick's wearing off a little so my bruising is showing for a little bit, just in case anybody's thinking, is it? Is, it's, it is. So, we are just after quarter to ten, going on ten to ten, and yeah, we've not had a huge amount of change. I would say that crease has kind of widened slightly. Um, there's a bit of wear beside it now. I'm just going to zoom you right in because it's it's not drastic, so you do have to zoom in to see that some of the shadow is wearing off. 
and it's just fading a bit compared to the other side. So, yeah, can't quite recommend this one. I would say for, for the price difference, go for this guy. Um, just pass. I like the fact that this has got a pigmented base um, to help conceal any kind of veins and things. Gives you a good kind of, helps even out the canvas that you're working on. This claim that it was going to boost the pigment of your eyeshadow, and yes, it possibly did. Um, let's do a swatch with it and a swatch without it, just to to double check. Um, but it didn't do as much as the next one anyway, so I'll do a wee swatch Rooney on my hand. Um, you can also see just how wet this is, um, which is weird. This is so silicony. Um, <laughs> clean my hand off. Leggings are thin, not gems. Um, what colour? I haven't even swatched this one yet, so let's play with that. Because <laughs> why not? So, so that's it on its own. It is very pretty. Why haven't I played with this? And um, can we see? So basically the primer is running down here and I'm not really seeing much of a difference, much if any of a difference. Um, let's run it all the way along. No, my hand now looks a state. So, I'm going to say this doesn't actually improve the pigmentation of your eyeshadow. It doesn't seem to make them show up more vibrantly. It certainly seems to fade more throughout the day. This eye 100% looks less vibrant than this one. And we've got a crease. So, yeah. Oh, and it's transferred down onto my eyeliner as well, which it hasn't on this side. Well, I can really make out anyway. Strange. Um, so, yeah. And okay, this is a third more than this one. But a third more for having your eyeshadow actually look the way that it started the day as. Yeah, that's to, to me that's totally worth it. Um, I think considering that it's an eyeshadow primer and you buy it once every couple of months, that price difference is pretty negligible over that time scale. If it was something like, I don't know, shampoo, conditioner, shower gel or something, then yeah, those two pounds would mount up. But when you're talking, like, you know, yeah, my, my eyeshadow primer lasts me for months, so we're probably talking like a penny or two a day um, price difference, and for me, it would be totally worth it. So, I was sticking with this one. I don't even see myself like using this one up because I just don't want to have high eyeshadow fading in doing that. What's what's the point of putting that effort in if it's going to go away? So if you've got any questions, leave them down below and I will get back to you. Um, but yeah, didn't help the pigment, didn't help the long lasting, not worth it. So I hope you guys had an awesome weekend and are looking forward to Christmas and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.